Aloha and Namaste. My name is Jonathan Barlow Gee, and I'm a metaphysician. A large part of what this entails is scholarly research culminating in applying variable labels to geometric lattice diagrams with the intention of finding axiomatic relationships between these variables. Some would call this doing Kabbalah. To me, it is simply symbology. Consider this design, called an apocalypse star, based on a diagram in the work Dimensions of Paradise by number theorist John Frederick Carden Michel, 1933 to 2009. Onto it have been affixed all 22 attributes of Kabbalah's mystical paths of wisdom, corresponding also to the Tarot trumps that include the 12 signs of the zodiac round, the seven classical planets of antiquity, and the three alchemical phases of matter. To better understand why these 22 variable labels are each placed in the location they are on this diagram, we may also look at it color-coded. Here we see that the 12 astrological signs of the zodiac round apply upon the seven lengths of blue lines, the skip one heptagram, and four out of the seven red lines, the skip two heptagram, the other three being devoted to the alchemical elements. Surrounding these, in green, are the seven classical planets of antiquity. The result of this arrangement is the placement of the equivalent symbols onto the so-called Apocalypse Star, as we see here. The labels of the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac round we see are doubled, so that there are a total of twenty-four zodiac signs, six alchemical glyphs, and the seven classical planets of antiquity, labeled here. We have now seen how the seven-pointed star, or heptagram, can serve as a lattice onto which may be placed, at least, the twenty-two symbols of Hakabala's mystic paths, and thus how this apocalypse star may serve as a truncated form of Hakabala's tree of life model. So now that we understand this basic tool of metaphysics, Let's try to apply it to some other, perhaps more well-known, symbols of so-called sacred geometry. From these three most essential shapes in 2D, Euclidean plane space, the circle, the triangle, and the square, can be extrapolated their fourth spatial dimensional counterparts in the forms of the torus, the stelloctahedron, and the tesseract. Let us look at these forms, but especially at their symbols, the shadows they cast into the collective subconscious, in this case as the flower of life, the Sri Yantra, and Metatron's cube. The first of these such forms we can deal with is also the most complex, but because it is the basis for much of Kabbalah, I have already addressed it in great detail elsewhere and will not belabor the point here but to say a tesseract is a fourth spatial dimensional object and as such may exist in multiple different places in three space and at multiple different times and still be unified as a single hyperspatial object. As such the tesseract is a metaphorm or archetype of sacred geometry expressing the notion of time. In modern New Age literature there are equivalencies drawn between Metatron, Enoch, and Thoth or Tahuti, the Egyptian god of the moon who also reigned over time as the record keeper of all the days lived by each newly dead soul to be weighed. Now, the next simpler shape we may consider the form of is the hypertetrahedron, or stelloctahedron, whose symbolic shadow is cast as the Sri Yantra, 
an ancient Vedic design based on an even more ancient sacred geometry. The Sri Yantra is in the Orient much alike what the Tree of Life lattice diagram of Kabbalah is for the Occident. First, we should note in studying the symbolic shadow of the Sri Yantra, cast down by the fourth dimensional form of the twin conjoined tetrahedra, derives originally from the two dimensional shape of the simple triangle or trigram. By repeatedly recombining this shape with itself, we can derive more archetypal sacred geometries in two space, and each of these will have its own symbol set attributed to it. The Sri Yantra provides lesser and greater sizes of triangles interior to its overall design. Nine primary triangles comprise the structure carving out 43 smaller triangles within them, and these can all be organized according to a series of concentric levels and depicted three-dimensionally as Mount Maru. The Sri Yantra is central to the Sri Vidya system of Hindu Tantra, which is based on the Hindu philosophy of Shaktiism, or belief in the goddess Adi Parashakti, whose name means first supreme power, and whom rules as the primordial cosmic energy from the source of all else. Central to the Sri Yantra is the Bindu, or power point, literally droplet in Sanskrit, considered the point at which creation begins and may become unity. The Bindu is also described as the sacred symbol of the cosmos in its unmanifested state. Now let us turn our attention from ancient oriental metaphysics to the origin for the concept of a toroidal vortex coil. The simplest shape of the three given to start with is the circle, its four-dimensional counterpart, the torus, and the shadowed symbol cast out by this form is the so-called flower of life depiction of modern sacred geometry. Just as the 4D torus was the basis for the so-called vortex coil, so too was the flower of life the symbol by which ancient people referred to the torus. The flower of life model contains six circles intersecting at a point with the seventh circle centered on that intersection, producing a design with six-fold dihedral symmetry composed from six intersecting vesica Pisces lenses. The pattern figure can be drawn with pen and compass by creating seven interlinking circles of the same diameter, touching the previous circle's center. The second circle is centered at any point on the first circle. All following circles are centered on the intersection of two other circles. The triangular lattice form, with circle radii equal to their separation, is called a seven overlapping circles grid. The name Flower of Life is modern associated with the New Age movement, and commonly attributed to specifically Dronvalo Melchizedek in his book The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, 1999. The six-petal rosette, central to the design, is also known as the Son of the Alps, and has been used as the emblem of Padanian nationalism in northern Italy, since the 1990s. Martha Bartfield describes the construction. This design consists of circles having a one unit radius with each point of intersection serving as a new center. The design can be expanded ad infinitum depending upon the number of times the odd numbered points are marked off. 
In quilting, the pattern has been called diamond or triangle wedding ring to distinguish it from the traditional square tiling pattern. The pattern also underlies one type of giri pattern, a decorative Islamic geometric art form used in architecture and handicraft objects consisting of angled lines that form an interlacing strap pattern. Patterns of seven overlapping circles appear in historical artifacts from the 7th century BC onwards. They become a frequently used ornament in the Roman Empire period and survive into medieval artistic traditions both in Islamic art, Giri architectures and decorations, and in Gothic art cathedral and stained glass motif designs. Similar patterns were sometimes used in England as apotropaic marks to keep witches from entering buildings. The pattern is also to be found in the Hindu temple at Pravanan in Java. Although the drawings are not mentioned in the extensive listings of graffiti at the temple compiled by Margaret Murray in 1904. Five patterns of 19 overlapping circles appear on the granite columns at the Temple of Osiris in Abydos, Egypt, and a further five on a column opposite the building, all drawn in red ochre. The oldest now known occurrence of the overlapping circles pattern is dated to 645 BC and found on the threshold of the palace of Assyrian king Ashur Bani Apli, 668 to 627 BC, in Dur Surukin, the fortress of Sargon, present day Khorsabad. The symbol, carved into a house's ceiling beam, was supposed to protect the house from lightning strikes. In this Cypro-Archaic 1, 8th to 7th centuries BC cup from Idalion, Cyprus, the pattern does not have a hexagonal outline. The carvings on the cup also depict mythological scenes a sphinx frieze, and the representation of a king vanquishing his enemies. In this mosaic from Ephesus, an ancient Greek city on the coast of Ionia, in present-day Izmir province, Turkey, we find an example dating from sometime between the city's founding in the 10th century BC until around the time of its sacking by the Goths, in 263 AD. The design becomes more widespread in the early centuries of the Common Era and was a frequently used ornament in the Roman Empire period. Herod the Great, 73 BC until 4 BC, built a palace within the fortress of Herodium, about 12 kilometers south of Jerusalem. This was most likely where Herod lived. He decorated his rooms with mosaic floors and elaborate frescoes. In the trepidarium of the Roman bathhouse at Herod's palace, we find this mosaic of the Flower of Life seven circle. Dating from around this same period, the Talpia tomb is a rock-cut tomb discovered in 1980 A.D. in the East Talpia neighborhood, five kilometers, around three miles, south of the old city in East Jerusalem. The tomb contained ten ossuaries, six inscribed with epigraphs, including one interpreted as Yeshua bar Yohesef, Joshua, son of Joseph. Several of these bear flower of life pattern sacred geometrical engravings. The other epigraphs read, 
Yose, a diminutive of Joseph. Maria, written in Aramaic script, a Latin form of the Hebrew name Miriam, Mary. Matia, Hebrew for Matthew. Miriamini e Mara, Greek for Mary known as the Master. The similar name, Mariamne, is found in the Acts of Philip. Lastly, Yehuda bar Yeshua, possibly Aramaic for Judah, son of Jesus. Although likely attributable to this visual representation of the Borromean rings used as an emblem of Lorenzo de' Medici in San Pancrazio, Florence, Leonardo da Vinci recorded observations about this geometric pattern as well. Da Vinci, in his Codex Atlanticus, folio 307R to 309V, as well as in 459R, dated 1478 to 1519 AD, explicitly discussed the mathematical proportions of the design. While providing a geometric puzzle as a pastime may have caught the attention of the maestro momentarily, this model seems to have proved of little practical use in spite of Leonardo's attempts to decipher and decrypt it. So this shape declined into the dustbin of history where it languished for the next 600 years or so until now. Using the method of Marco Roden and Randy Powell in arranging coils into a torus by counting the number of gaps between them, I have formulated what I hope will serve as the basis for further consideration to come on the subjects of induction patterns, vortex math, and implosion theories. Note that because the seventh circle contains the rest, the central six circles overlap to leave a total of 36 gaps. But even more significantly than as an electrical engineering schematic for a basic wire coiling design, the toroid form can be geometrically expanded in abstract to encompass the entirety of all possible motions for direction, the three vectors of the past being blue shifted and the three vectors of the future red shifted. Thus, in a sense, a simple toroid may be thought of as containing not only our own cosmos, but also its three most likely futures and its three definite pasts. A flat circle expanded becomes a 3D sphere. A sphere turned inside out becomes a 4D toroid. The combination of the 4D toroid and the 3D sphere is a 5D hypersphere. If a 4D toroid can expand indefinitely to encompass the whole of our cosmos and all its possible pasts and potential futures, then a 5D hypersphere may be thought of as describing the conditions of the Big Bang or those at the gravitational singularity in the core of a black hole and as being adjacent to our own cosmos in its timelines. The aura of a living person has evolved to mimic these cosmic scale patterns as well. The averaged pattern of all people's electromagnetic field lines forms the torus over time. So within us each illuminates forth a five-dimensional primary clear light as motivating force for this EM field. This single emanation of 5D hyperspatial or tachyonic radiation 
splits itself prismatically into the five chakras along the spine and two in our brain. Or, in short, the primary clear light splits apart into the seven vortexes of the chakras, like a beam of white light being split by a prism into the seven color visible spectrum. Namaste and Aloha. Mathematical nature of the diagonal lengths for the sequence of the first five squares arranged along a gnomon. Apply Pythagorean theorem, reduction of square roots methods, and the formula for the diagonal of any width perfect square. Results are, as noted by Cylon, the Pythagorean cult exile, for the unit square with sides equal to one each, the diagonal is square root of 2. Thus, according to the formula for the diagonal of perfect squares, each further iteration is the width of one side of the square multiplied by square root of 2. According to application of the Pythagorean theorem, we arrive at square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared equals square root of 8, where 2 squared equals 4, which reduces to the same amount expressed as 2 times the square root of 2. Likewise, for 3 square root of 2 equals square root of 18, of 4 square root of 2 equals square root of 32, and of 5 square root of 2 equals square root of 50. This is due to the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared or square root of the leg squared plus leg squared equals square root of the hypotenuse wherein square root of 5 squared equals 25 plus 5 squared equals square root of 50 on the left the seven planetary rulers over the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac expressed as an orthogonal matrix. On the right, the seven chakras of the Kundalini along a diagonal vector between twelve regular polytopes in multiple dimensions. In this diagram, above, we see the now familiar area 25, 5 squared, However, here we see it divided into twin area 4, 2 squared, and area 6, 3 squared squares that overlap in the center to form a single base unit square. The base 4 squares are in the upper right and lower left, and between them is an arc showing the relationship between them in the center square. The measure of the leg of the area 25, 5 squared square divided in this way yields the golden ratio of 1 to 2 or 2 thirds. This golden ratio called phi also appears in the legs of the regular pentagram as between the length of a leg under a stellation to the length of that leg as an arm of an adjacent stellation. This works out such that the length 3 is blue, the length 2 green, and the length 1 red in both the diagrams above. Here we can see that by measuring the circle's radius as the hypotenuse of the golden ratio Pythagorean triangle, we can yield the larger areas of the base 8, 10, and 12 squared circles. Therefore, these are the two ways to yield a square circle from applying the Pythagorean triangle with its golden ratio of 3, 4, 5 to split the 15 degree angle difference between 45, 45 fractal expansion, base 12 hypotenuse, and the 30, 60 mnemonic expansion, base 10 hypotenuse. These lengths for the hypotenuse radius of the square circle are derived by continuing to follow the gnomonic and fractal expansion rates up to base 12, 13, 
and 16 areas. Here are all the fundamental measures of the Pythagorean square circle formula for any figure up to circle radius 8. One joule of energy equals one kilogram of mass. Traveling at a velocity of light speed squared or 89 quadrillion 875 trillion 517 billion 873 million 681 thousand 800 square meters per second squared where the square of one second is one second E equals MC squared light speed or 299 million 792,458 meters per second equals the square root of one joule of energy per each square root of one kilogram of mass. C equals the square root of E over M. One kilogram of mass equals one joule of energy exhibiting stationary density at the square root of light speed or 17,314 square meters per second m equals e over square root of each original idea is a shard from the transfinite ideal metaphor. Every thought is attacked from all sides by countless alternative perspectives. All emotions occur simultaneously as scalar wavelengths in a planar field. Postulate. If the functions of psi, ESP potential, are graphed onto geometric forms as diagrammatic lattices, then their sum yields multidimensional results. Formula. If idea is mapped onto the corner points of a metaform object and thought is mapped onto the edges of same and emotion onto the faces of same then patterns form thus a tetrahedron equals four ideas four thoughts and four emotions an octahedron equals six ideas twelve thoughts and eight emotions a cube equals eight ideas, twelve thoughts, and six emotions. An isosahedron equals twelve ideas, thirty thoughts, and twenty emotions. A dodecahedron equals twenty ideas, thirty thoughts, and twelve emotions. These patterns also occur in non-third dimensional forms as well. Explication The combination of all actual motions of all metaforms made of psi energy moving amidst and often through one another amounts to the experience of this limitless energy field as our own mental egos. Our own neural networks are only sieves filtering out static and rendering more exact psi energy, temporal ellipses in their wake. The combination of all possible metaforms of psi and all their possible trajectories provides the inductive cosmological set and deduction reduces this from infinitude to an apprehensible scale. The result is the perception of psi energy 
in phases within the singularity well of ego as ideas, thoughts, and emotions. There are various ways to define what constitutes an ideal form in any dimension. For example, if one begins with the zero dimension of one corner point and proceeds next to the two types of one dimensional extension of such a point, the straight line and the semicircular arc. However, these lower dimensions are not usually included in the list of ideal forms, which begins most commonly with two-dimensional planar faces in the form of the three regular polygons, triangle, square, and pentagon. However, the circle, comprised of a single completed arc, can also be counted as a shape at this stage, as the sphere can be in three dimensions, although it is usually excluded. In three dimensions, the ideal forms are the regular polyhedra, the tetrahedron or simplex of four triangles, the octahedron or orthoplex of eight triangles, the cube or hexahedron of six squares, the isosahedron of 20 triangles, and the dodecahedron of 12 pentagons. In four space, these have corresponding geometrical forms as well. There are six four space regular polytopes, the five cell hypertetrahedron, the eight cell tesseract, the sixteen cell hyperoctahedron, the twenty four cell self dual, the one hundred and twenty cell. 4D isosahedron and the 600 cell for dodecahedron. The circle and sphere also have a correspondent fourth spatial dimensional form, the torus or hypersphere. In all dimensions greater than four, only three types of metaform ideal shapes exist. These are extensions of patterns formed in the first three 3D solids, the simplex, hypertetrahedron, the orthoplex, hyperisosahedron, and the tesseract, hypercube. Therefore, in the five extraspatial dimensions from the fifth through the tenth dimension, there are only 15 ideal forms. To assemble the five ideal forms in three dimensions, and do so each one at a time, one would only need as many components, corners, edges, and faces as the largest, most complex of the solid forms. In three dimensions, this being the dodecahedron of 20 corners, 30 edges, and 12 pentagonal faces. In four dimensions, the 600 cell of 120 corners, 720 edges, 1,200 faces, and 600 solid shapes. However, if you wanted to assemble all of the solids in all of the dimensions simultaneously, one would require 190 components, 50 corners, 90 edges, and 50 faces, in three dimensions, and 49,990 elements, 773 corners, 1,362 edges, 2,082 faces, and 773 solid cells in four dimensions. Thus, for all the ideal forms in both three and four spatial dimensions, to be all assembled one next to the other in a line would require 5,180 parts, 823 corners, 1,452 edges, 2,132 faces, 
773 solid cell shapes. The total of all these parts assembled into shapes along this line, however, is only 11 ideal forms in the third and fourth dimensions, excluding the sphere and torus. To assemble the 15 ideal forms in the fifth through the tenth spatial dimensions, and to do so each one at a time, one would only need as many components, corners, edges, and faces, as the largest, most complex of the metaforms. In ten dimensions, this being the hypercube of 59,048 components. However, if you wanted to assemble all of these metasolids in all of the dimensions from 5 through 10 simultaneously, one would require a total of 4,020 components for the simplex model, the hypertetrahedron, 88,446 components for the tesseract model, the hypercube, and 88,000 446 components alike for the orthoplex or cross polytope, the hyperoctahedron. This means to assemble these 15 shapes altogether would require a total of 180,912 components to complete. To assemble one each of the 26 ideal forms in the first 10 dimensions one would therefore need 186,092 components.